In this problem, we want to find the B field inside a toroid and outside of the toroid. And when they say outside of the toroid for part B, uh, it could either mean on the outer side where R is greater than little r, or inside, uh, out, you know, inside the circle where R is less than little r. So it's still outside of the coiled solenoid go that goes into a circle, but it's uh, on the uh, smaller radius of the loop. So we can do two things for finding the B field outside of this toroid right here. So looking at um, the B field here that travels along this path, let's just say in this direction, we could see that the B field going through a solenoid was always perpendicular to the current that's going through these little tiny loops in the solenoid, basically for the most part. So the B field is always going to be perpendicular to that. It's always going to be parallel to this path that goes straight through the solenoid. So this dot product is going to go away since the B field is always going to go parallel to the circular path that we have here going through the solenoid. So we'll have B times two pi little r. And that's going to equal to mu naught i going through. Now the thing is, uh, when you're in this Amperian loop and uh, you are, you have half of the solenoid uh, loops going inside this Amperian loop and half going outside the Amperian loop, you'll see that the loop in the problem at least always goes down as it's inside the loop and comes up, up outside the paper when you're outside the loop. So it goes down into the loop and up outside the loop. So that means inside this Amperian loop, current always goes down into the, pa into the paper. So I is simply going to be the amount of current that goes through one wire multiplied by the number of loops that are in this solenoid or that's in this toroid. So that's going to be n loops. We don't know how many loops it is, but I'll just put m there for now. So to isolate b, we're going to have the b field mu naught current going through e, the, the wire here multiplied by the number of turns in this toroid divided by 2 pi r. And that's going to be the answer for the b field inside the toroid. Now, if you go outside the toroid, let's go ahead and do this one right here where uh, you're outside the toroid in a larger radius than the toroid itself. So again, we're going to uh, just do this Amperian loop and we'll look at how the B field um, uh, is parallel to that Amperian loop. So B 2 pi R and we'll make, uh, I guess we'll call it R prime. How about that? Mu naught. And now we have to find out the total current inside the Amperian loop. Now the thing is you have current going down on this side of the smaller Amperian loop and going upwards out of the paper on the outer side. Both of this down and up pattern of this solenoid are both inside the larger Amperian loop. So even though the net current goes down inside the smaller loop and then up outside that smaller loop, the net current is still going to be zero because as much current that goes down, it will come up uh, on the outer side of the smaller loop. So net I is actually going to be zero, which means that the B field is going to be zero uh, outside of the toroid with a larger radius than the toroid. Now with the smaller radius, it's, it's kind of easy. There's no current inside the loop. So the B field is still going to be zero. So outside the toroid, no matter which direction you go, B field's going to be zero, but inside the B field's going to be based on the radius of the toroid.